I'm going to talk about Joseph Omamuga. Towards his death, he was referred to as Joseph Omamuga. But I think when I was working with the intelligence, he used to be referred to as Joseph Pius Omamuga. Uh, he is a person very unique that we will take long to have even a fraction of that person. Uh, imagine a professor in an environment at Makerere University in 1966. Just imagine. And uh, he, he later joined Moi University. He is the founder of Moi University School of Environmental Sciences. He was its first dean. But the last time I saw him, it really hurt me. Those are the things that was going on in my mind as I was talking to him the last time I saw him. The last time I saw him was um, uh, there is this uh, Uchumi supermarket at railways where we met and uh, he was going to railway terminus and uh, he wanted uh, I escorted him he knew me and he respected me I'll tell you why uh, when we met we started talking he was telling me Kijana this Kijana that advice uh, but mostly it was an advice of how to go about change of lifestyle because if you see me even today and see me immediately before I was sacked from the police things have really gone down uh, I recently put on some weight because of some of the advices people like him told me you know when you are relaxed even if you don't lead a good lifestyle you take things lightly you put on weight and in African Putting on weight shows a good life. Uh, we were going, he was going to board a matatu to, I think, Ongata Rongai. And uh, we went with him. I was planning on a polite way to tell him to give me my fare. You know, getting fare from politicians, you get some good money that you even do some shopping. But as I was looking for a way to ask him for fare, uh, we went to, we, we found a matat which was going to Ongata Rongai, and they said that the fare was 70 shillings. Uh, he asked me to verify that it was 70 shillings. I told him it is true, it is 70 shillings. Then he took out a 500 shillings note that uh, he took out a 500 shillings note that uh, he gave me and told me to look for change. I then went to Uchumi supermarket, uh, then got the change and gave him. By then, of course, I was sure I would not ask for the fare. As he was boarding the matatu, he took out 70 shillings and gave the conductor. He had told me earlier that uh, paying early, uh, would he knew that uh, if the matatu arrived uh, somewhere in KWS, Langata Barracks area, they would change and say it is 100. Or if you give a bigger amount, they would, they would not give you change. And I was looking at him. Well, we stayed for quite some time. He did not die immediately, but we stayed for quite a long time without meeting, and that is when I learned that he had died. How did he come to know of me? Or how did I know of him? Or how did we meet? I think well, how did we meet is the more appropriate. Uh, it was during the Changamwe by election, 1996. He was the MP for Rangwe, somewhere in South Nyanza. And uh, I was the 
I was an election official. We had been, there were, there were eight or so uh, polling stations and uh, I was one of the presiding officers. But uh, on the eve, on the eve of the elections, I was to be the presiding officer of Chani polling station. And on the eve of the elections, I was, uh, uh, Sharif Nasir complained. Sharif Nasir complained that some people have been brought in from Bara where they were to come and rig elections. So he insisted that all presiding officers be made people from coast. Uh, out of eight, only two remained. All others we were demoted. But since my wife was also a deputy presiding officer, I didn't mind much. And she was at Chaani. So on the election day again, we had a baby, my son called Kareidi. Uh, he was still suckling. Uh, we had a maid who was to take care of him for one day. But then she fell sick and we took her to a private hospital called Bakarani, I think it is Bakarani, in Mutuapa. So we went to Kenya, no, we went to Mombasa Polytechnic with a kid and uh, without a maid. So, but we knew how to go about it. So I was, I was transferred from Chani and taken to, uh, I was taken to Changamwe Primary School as a deputy presiding officer, Rovi. It's a long story about that by election. But uh, the young boy who was made the presiding officer was called Alex and he was, fr he was a Taita by tribe. Things, I, I organized things so well that everything I did as the presiding officer, I only used to give him papers to sign and I would, he would ask me if everything was okay, then he would sign. Uh, there is something that happened that uh, we, whenever we used to have an election, we used to have something called a black book. Uh, that is where we registered people. So any person who came and his name was not on the register, we used to go to the black book and we would write a statement and say 20 people came and write the names of those people. They were not on register and we wrote their name and we, we, we allowed them. But this time, orders had come from Kanu, orders had come from Electoral Commission headquarters that anybody whose name is not in the register should not vote. Uh, and then the registers, we ha the registers we had were missing a lot of pages where the surname was starting with an O, where the surname was starting with an M, and where the surname was starting with a W. Uh, those were names which uh, are associated with Luos and Kambas, Maingi and Wambua. So what happened, and this thing made me be a, life li a lifetime friend of Professor Umba Muga, is that uh, when it came to, to people whose names were not there, the presiding officer had already seen things were so hot for him that uh, whenever I could overrule him, people say, how are you overruling the presiding officer? So he decided to take my badge, which said James Lando, deputy presiding officer, he put it on and gave me his, which was Alex and a certain name in uh, a tighter name. So there were times when they would call me Alex and by the time I discovered, hey, yo, then, they, then I would say I was daydreaming. Uh, I decided uh, Umamuga had come with a file which had all the names. So when somebody, somebody's name was not on the list, we could take that file check Uma Muga's file and check and find the name is there. But when you go to the file that we were given, pages had been plugged. How can you say it was plugged or it was not included? 
you'd find pages when it is M. There is M22, M23, and then M30. Let's say seven pages are missing. And somebody had checked on pages which had obviously Kamba and Luo names. So I decided to use uh, Oma Muga's file, but then counter check again with the black book, which we had for this one election only. We have been instructed not to use it, but I used it. Oma Muga really respected me. So it reached a place because I had, I'm so good in logistics, naturally. Anybody who has been to GSU training school must be good in logistics. So I organized the 15 uh, streams that I personally opened each stream one by one. Stream number one started at exactly six. And by eight, we had already cleared the stream number 15. Around 3 p.m., I started closing stream number 15 so that to, towards the end, when it was approaching 5 p.m., I had already remained with around four streams. This way, it was a bit easy because I would give a booklet to somebody and say, once this booklet is over, don't, don't let anybody else vote for easy accounting. Uh, the organization so pleased... Uh, and also anything I did and whatever, I was doing it openly and consulting. That made Professor Oma Muga respect me. Now it reached a time, you know, we had taken somebody from Chani, a lady who wanted to be a, a clerk, a polling clerk, and she had been refused, I mean, there were lesser chances, so she was not given the work. And I did uh, talk to her, to hold the kid. So it reached a time around lunchtime. I told uh, Alex, the presiding officer, that uh, I wanted uh, uh, almost all the paraffin that we had been given because we had pressure lamp. Uh, I t I hit, he tried to question, I said, no, we can still remain with a few pressure lamps for the three or four streams that are there. Should there be more, should there be a big turn up? So I took three jerry cans, 15 liters in total of paraffin and left Changamwe to Chaani Social Hall. While I was going there, I reached where uh, the lady who was holding my, my son, Karidhi, was standing somewhere in a shed near the gate. I approached her, asked her how she was going, she was doing. I was so mindful about her. You see, when you're mindful about somebody, when it comes from your heart, it moves other people. So she was moved and we had agreed that we were to pay her uh, amount equivalent to a deputy presiding officer's one day salary, which was more than what she could have gotten as a clerk. So when I was there, I was asking how the kid was doing. I, I even gave the girl an opportunity to stretch a bit then uh, after she had stretched i told her take this uh, paraffin uh, just give me the containers because our bosses want the containers uh, then uh, after talking to her i went and uh, became acting deputy presiding officer in my wife's stream she came and breastfeeted the kid uh, and then she, the, the two ladies had lunch together, which I had bought. And then when she had relaxed uh, for about half an hour, she came and relieved me. And then I came back to Changamwe to be, to start closing uh, stream 15. That is when Pius Oma Muga produced uh, some meat, roast meat, and invited me to eat. I told him, no, I cannot eat your food because it is against our regulations. He told, and you know, I was telling him that, but inside me, I was so hungry that I would have eaten uh, that meat. Then he told me that he had studied me and found that I was the best presiding officer Kenya has ever produced. I asked him how. He told me uh, how they had uh, 
done surveillance to me. Imagine I, I was I'm an expert in surveillance, but it never occurred to me that at that time of play, for the Kenya could mount surveillance on me. So they at they had mounted surveillance. They have seen what I done. They, they, they were even touched when I told the the, 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 the lady that uh, him after any bonus, we will just pay you what we had agreed. And the lady on her own volition said that the 15 liters she was getting was more than how much is a liter today? A liter of fuel, 15 liters. So she said with that paraffin. She was sure of uh, fuel for the whole month, so she was demanding nothing from us. So when he said that, before he had even completed talking, I was already eating. <laughs> uh, that is how we became close. Now, Uma Muga, I said he was a professor in Makerere University. From Makerere University, uh, in 1972, there was a military coup against Jomo Kenyatta, of which it was containing mostly Kamba and Luos. Kamba and Luos. On the side of the Luos, on the side of Kambas, there was Gideon, Gideon Mutiso. Yeah, Gideon Mutiso was the MP for Yata. There was Major General Dolo. There was uh, Chief Justice Kitili Mwendwa. Uh, and on the Luo side, there was a Professor Omar Muga, among others. He was working in Makerere University in Kampala, but he was heavily, and he was jailed for that. After completing his jail, he went back to his teaching at Makerere University. When he was teaching at Makerere University, uh, that was until uh, 1981, 82, when Moi University was started uh, as the second, it depends on what, what you interpret. Some say it is the third, some say it's the second university. Because Kenyatta University was, Kenyatta University was a constituent college of Nairobi University. So at the time when uh, Kenyatta University was upgraded to a full university, Moi University was started, and he is the founder and dean of environmental school Moi University. That was around the 1980s, 81, 82, early 80s. Then in 1988, he joined politics and contested the Rangwe seat. Uh, in the Mulolongo seat, he's won and was uh, made an assistant minister for political guidance, something like that, with somebody, Nahasho Njuno, from Krinyaga, who was the minister. Uh, between 1988 and 1992. 1992, he joined there. Uh, he did not even reach 1992. Uh, there was a climate change there was a climate change uh, conference in Rio de Janeiro. Now, Moi was very clever. Moi used to get, if he wanted to write a paper, he would get so many dons to write a paper. And he would spend maybe a fortnight uh, rehearsing the topic. And so when he presented the Nyayo philosophy of love, peace, and unity, you'd say, hey, he's an intellectual. So uh, Oma Muga prepared a speech on climatical changes. They spent about a fortnight where Moi was being coached on pronunciations and such things. And even in his speech, he would look at the speech. It used to be written, some things were written in bold, where he would reach a sentence and be told pause a bit, look to your left, look to your right, look to your front. He could, whenever he could talk, I mean, him he was just like we Kenyans who know Lingala music and say Mobali na Mobali and we don't know what Mobali and Mobali means. Uh, he would talk and pause and... So when he had completed the speech, he was given a standing ovation 
of 10 minutes. 10 minutes you had me. Now, people all over the world started saying, people, what when I say my more in form two? See how he... And uh, those days, people, getting a colored TV was a problem. So people used to like watching TVs in bars. So Omamuga was watching in a bar. And when Moi was giving a speech, he turned to the person next to him and said, I am the one who not only uh, authored the, the, the speech, but I also taught him on body language. In those days, the boss could be paid to spy on his secretary and the secretary would be paid too. So you could talk something where there are six people and the five will report what you have said. So that is how the information went and reached Moi. And uh, Okiki Amai with the canoe disciplinary things went and he was expelled and he left politics. That was his second life dying. The first one was when he was jailed, the second one dying. Then the third and final death, he joined Ford Kenya, he joined the original Ford. When it split into two, he joined Ford Kenya. And uh, when Jaramogi died, uh, there are some Luos who sided with Wamalwa Kijana. I'm talking of Kinab James uh, Orengo uh, and uh, him among others. Now when he joined them, uh, Raila by then held the Luo Nyanza and that is when this man got his third and final poli political death. It is really Moi's occasion has finished some of us to an extent that if you look at the lifestyle we stay and the life that we would have stayed had Moi not punished us, it is their worlds apart. Our children have suffered, we ourselves have suffered, but uh, that is what under bridge.